Okay, hello all you people out there, this is Michael of the Toon Hestuge, and this is something I'll finally get around to, the last part of this chess tutorial. Yes, I know, it took like two months, what do you want? Um, I actually wasn't sure if I really wanted to make this or not, because um, I thought about it a little more after publishing part three, and I was like, you know, there's not really that much left to do. Um, I said I'd do like, pawn rules and, um, I don't know, maybe castleization and game timers and that kind of weird stuff, but um, that's really just a bunch of... The pawn rules are really just a bunch of if statements, and um, the timer is just, well, like, an alarm. Basically, although, you, there's a little bit of extra programming into it, and stuff like that. Uh, score, you can just add values to pieces and add to score when they get captured and stuff. But people were bothering me about making the last one, so I guess I'll do it. Anyway, first thing, the only thing that I really think is uh, lacking from the final product, um, besides, like, multiplayer and AI, but I'm not going to go into multiplayer and AI, because that's the whole... Um, that would take like 30 videos to do. Anyway, so pawns, they can move two spaces ahead when they're um, on the first turn, and they attack diagonally. As of now, what happens is something that looks like this. You'll move one space on the first turn, and you can move diagonally whenever. So that's not quite correct. Uh, let's see, so to deal with the, um, the two turn mov movement thing, yeah. First, we need to be able to tell the um, the game of the pieces move not. So we're just going to say, I don't know, um, I would do a true false variable that's like, has the piece been moved or not, but I think what would be a little bit more useful would be something like, um, moves. And good, that's not a, uh, the name of any special script or anything, so I'm gonna say moves equals zero. Alright, and then when you move the piece, um, that counter is going to increment, so... Uh, let's see, when you do left pressed, um, where is it? I haven't done this for two months. Okay, here it is. So this is when you move, it looks like. So we're just going to say, in addition to owners X and Y and um, all that, we're just going to say, did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Moves plus equals one. Or you can do plus plus in a studio. All right. So that's that. The game now knows what... um. Whoa. I almost thought my chair that the game now knows if the piece has been moved and how many moves it's made, so that's fine. So now we're gonna say highlight possible moves. And we're gonna full screen that because we can. And now this is a little bit different, scaled and whatnot. So Pollen falls under this category, scaled is false. If you remember um the mo the yeah, motion is not reflected as many times as you can until you hit the border and the end of the border another piece. So pawns move exactly one square ahead or whatever. So we're just going to do some special code if um, uh, piece the object in uh, the index. My fingers are cold. Leave me alone. Equals my computer froze. Wonderful. Okay, that's better. It seems like every time I try to record a game maker thing, my computer freezes up. Um, in that case, there was a memory leak somewhere, and um, I threw about two-thirds of my RAM down the drain. Anyway, if the piece is a pawn, then we're going to uh, be running some special code, and otherwise we're not going to be running some special code. So, let's see. The piece is the pawn, and the turn is one. Uh, we are also going to be... Uh, if uh, piece dot moves equals zero and curled braces, then we're also going to be highlighting a piece. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Highlighty, yes. We're going to be highlighting location. Uh, I know what I'm doing here. Piece dot um, xx. Uh, not. Wow, dot dot, yes, that's definitely going to compile. Uh, but piece.xx plus piece dot, piece dot move i0 2. And the y, I believe, is going to be exactly the same. Let me think about the grid. Yes, that should work. This might be going horizontal, but whatever. Uh, piece dot yy plus piece dot move i. Eh, I won. 
I should not record on days when my fingers are cold. All right, let's see. Is this um where well, that's good? Uh, gonna be passing the piece along. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're also going to be, by the way, highlighting the regular piece. So um, I could duplicate that line of code, or I think I could uh, go back on my word and get rid of this uh, else statement. All right, so let's run that and see what happens. Some more downloads folder. Loads of imagery resources. All right, good. So um, it goes two ahead on the first move, uh, and just one ahead on the second move. Now that's a little bit weird because it's also going to the sides. Really shouldn't be doing that. Um, so now we're going to be dealing with that. Whoa! All right. Yeah, my computer's off. There's probably still something wrong with it, but I'm not going to bother fixing it right now unless it goes in blue screens or something. I'm responsible. Yes. All right. So we can get rid of these curl braces because they're just there because um. Wanted to keep code contained, so that's pawns. Um, now, how to uh, how to deal with the moving sideways? So I guess what I probably should do is go into pawns and to use a define or redefine the movement and get rid of these two because um, that's where it tells it to go and move sideways, and that should only really happen through special code if it's um. Uh, that's index out of bounds. Let's see, what did I do? I know what I did. I forgot to change the possible moves to uh, just one. Excuse me. I'm gonna pretend that never happened. Like a responsible programmer. All right, good. So um, that gets rid of the moving sideways, and um, as you can see, you can go ahead one or or two. Doesn't even matter. All right, that's progress, I suppose. Now, also, if it's a pawn, if um, piece at location off to the sides. Uh, how are we going to represent that? Piece dot xx plus um. That will be forward, yes. And um, piece dot yy plus. And that's the um, that's the vertical. So we're that's going to be the up and down. So that's going to be uh, plus one. Uh, piece. Then that will be meeting the condition of um, having a piece diagonal to you, so we're just going to do that and say highlight not over two, but um, over one and up one, plus one, and then we're just going to be doing the same thing for, uh, whoa, alignment. That doesn't even matter, but I say this all the time, um, some OCD. That should do it. All right, so let's... I screwed up piece at location. I know my code. Uh, what's piece at location? X, X, and Y, Y. Where is it? Oh. I, uh, I probably copied and pasted something and didn't realize what I was copying and pasting. But let's try this again without failing, right? So we can move. We can do that. And that's... Okay, that doesn't work. So let's see. What's wrong? Let's see. Make sure I'm highlighting the right thing. Uh, that is... First turn movement, and this is horizontal and vertical. I can just say y y because um it's gonna be zero. Just get rid of that. It's redundant. I hope I don't have it backwards. I hope I'm not talking about like the x and y's backwards. But let's see what was happening again. All right. So um if there is a piece at location that then this should be happening. So this probably, uh, I'm screwing something up with the piece at location. Well, I see what I'm doing wrong. This should not be inside the, uh, the move equals zero thing. How did that happen? Thought I got rid of this, uh, that scope of stuff. Let's see. Let's align this a little bit better. I should probably just throw curly braces around this too, just, um, so I can read it. I probably removed the wrong curly brace somewhere. But yeah, okay, let's try that. It should work a lot better. Of course, I've been saying that for a while and it hasn't worked, but alright, so um that's that I can attack diagonally. The only thing is pawns can't attack forward because rules, and we need to be able to deal with that. So somewhere in here, uh let's see, if um I could completely rewrite the pawns movements as it is, but uh I don't feel like doing that. So 
if um he's uh uh, uh I say uh, a lot at location I can spell and and that happens. So if it's a pawn and if there's a space right in front of you, then don't do anything. So the best way to do that would be this continue thing like we have here. So continue. And let's see what this does. F5. And move over a little. Alright, perfect. You're attacking diagonally. That's the pawn rules. Um, anything else? I don't really know. Um, there's a couple other exception type... Uh, Exception type moves like Ampasan, which also has to do with pawns, which basically says uh, you're allowed to capture a piece if it if it's a pawn and it decides to. If you're both pawns, you're allowed to capture a piece if the other piece is a pawn and it has the opportunity to attack you, but it goes forward instead. It's really weird. Um, I think it's one of the most pointless rules in any game ever. Um, you also have castleization, which is with kings and rooks, where you can, um, if neither piece is moved and there's um. And none of the spaces between the king and the rook are occupied. You can have them kind of switch places in over the middle of the board. Uh, that's more, um, I don't know. I don't really feel like doing all that. I didn't do it in my original file, partially because I'm lazy, partially because, well, it's basically just a bunch of if statements checking if a bunch of conditions are true. And I don't really think I have to do a video about that. Um, is, is there anything else I can think of, like timers? Um, if you're at a chess tournament, you have you usually have timers. You usually get like 20 minutes per uh, per turn. You can take as much as you want, but you have to, like, not run out of time before the end of the game. It's that's just like working with uh, timers and probably alarms and stuff. Um, score chess pieces technically have a score. Pawns are like one. Uh, knights and bishops are I think two. Rooks are three, and queens are five. And king is the game I think. Um, but nobody I know has ever played using the score, so, um, I don't know about that. Multiplayer over networking. Networking isn't really my favorite thing, and there are a lot of people who are a lot better at that sort of thing in Game Maker. Right now, I'm just going to, um, throw my good friend Conker under the bus. I'll put an annotation link to his channel, uh, on the screen right now. He does Game Maker stuff as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, AI, that's obviously a lot more complicated for a game like chess. They have entire supercomputers that are dedicated only to uh, playing chess, but right now that's it for this. Um, that's pretty much just an example of what you can do, um, how to approach these kind of problems uh, with puzzles and logic and stuff, but if there's anything else that anyone has done, I've uh, done like NPCs and RPG type games or uh, someone a long time ago talked to me about doing a battleship thing, which would involve multiplayer over a uh, 39 DLL. I'll probably get into that later. Um, another reason I shouldn't do multiplayer is because I don't know if they've changed it for studio any. Um, I don't remember, and I'll have to do some research on that before that. But, yeah. Uh, for now, I've talked here for long enough. I hope you all enjoyed that and found it useful and stuff. Rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, watch some other stuff I have uploaded. And I will see you later. Oh, quickly, before I go, the, um, the original my like, kind of practice file for this, uh, there's gonna be a download link for that in the description. It's somewhat different. The implementation is somewhat different. Um, pawns are handled in a section of code, but I did it like this in this program because I thought it made more sense. So I'll put both downloads in the description. Uh, the one that I was working on in front of you right here and the original one that's nicely commented and everything. So yeah, have fun with that.